Hi, I'm Pastor Mike, and I believe scripture makes a difference. If you think so too, this is a message for you. As we continue to look at the Sermon on the Mount and come to the second half of chapter 5, Jesus confronts one of the then popular misconceptions of what the Jewish law was all about. In the first part of the chapter, he outlined the values and characteristics of a kingdom citizen, but now he addresses the difference in expectations. You see, first century Judaism was divided into several sects. They all sought to assure that the laws and traditions of their ancestors were correctly upheld. There were the Essenes who taught separation from the corrupt society. There were the Zealots who resisted Roman influence and the Sadducees, who kept the peace through accommodating the Romans. But the group most in opposition with Jesus' methods were the Pharisees, who held that a rigid following of rules led to acceptance by God, and therefore security. Now that may seem strange to us, but it isn't all that unheard of even today. Following set procedures and traditions makes, more, makes life more manageable. I mean, just try brushing your teeth or combing your hair in a different order sometime. And don't you usually take the same route to work? Why would you do that? In order to accurately estimate the time you need to leave to arrive on time. Traditions like bedtime and the time we get up in the morning and the time we leave for work prevent exhaustion from micromanaging each tiny detail of each individual day. And can there be any more important area in life to manage than our relationship with God? And if we can find a principle that supersedes all the laws to create a good relationship with God, isn't that scripture that makes a difference? In Matthew 5, 17 through 48, Jesus starts by addressing the basis of the Jewish relationship with God, the laws of Moses. Moses' laws can be studied in three sections or classifications of law. There's the moral law that we call the Ten Commandments and the ritual law or what's sometimes called the Levitical law since it was the Levitical priests that most pertained to. And then there was the cultural law, the laws of the land, the national laws. Uh, he assures the Jews that he's not removing these laws but fulfilling them. And by fulfill, he means he intends, among other things, to meet their requirements completely, to fulfill them to the fullest extent. When he says this, he implies that this hasn't been done yet. He even goes on to say that true righteousness was even beyond the behavior of the Pharisees, the rule keepers of his society. Jesus takes a sizable part of this passage to illustrate this principle. He talks about anger and adultery, honesty and retaliation, and he explains that adjusting the definitions to make these laws more manageable won't cut it. Then Jesus presents the principle that will make following the Jewish laws and traditions superfluous. But more on that next week. For now, just notice how Jesus is the only one to fulfill these laws of Moses, because he's the only one who can. And that's the exciting thing for us in the 21st century. Though we instinctively know that as humans, we can't be perfect, it's encouraging to remember Jesus is more. He's the God-man. He can understand the divine requirements as God and meet the divine requirements as man. He's the only one who can do both. He's the one that our race needs. And when a text points us to Jesus as the focus of our trust, we find in that a scripture that makes a difference. This video is adapted from the messages of Sunrise Fellowship, where we believe scripture makes a difference. Please consider liking this video and sharing it with your friends on your favorite social media. If you live near Enid, Oklahoma, we'd love to meet you. 
Our service times and places are on our Facebook page and can be found by searching Sunrise Fellowship Church. I hope you'll come back again for more scripture that makes a difference.